We love avocados. And we are in the fight for climate and environmental justice. Some of us, we feel like we are responsible shoppers, that our beloved avocado comes from fair trade. And this is a comfortable strategy, but it's not enough. Last 24th of September in Göttingen, I joined the Fridays for Future strike with my heart in Bogota. Because we are in this struggle together. The global south and the global north, they must come together seeking for trade agreements where the value change respect the human rights. And of course, protect the environment and reduce the climate crisis. And the reasons that in Bogota and in Colombia, Fridays for Future, the children and the young, young people are marching is because of this non-stopping violence. We are leaders and environmental leaders and farmers are being killed when they're fighting for their rights. And we are very upset and angry because of this non-storm rapid deforestation in the Amazon. The loss of the Amazon means that the climate crisis increases and will impact seriously our future generation and us. And I really want that my daughter, my grandchildren, they can still enjoy this beauty of the flying rivers that maintains the whole climate in South America and in the world. Can you imagine the world without all these beauties, without the flying rivers? And this is, this is not supposed to be happening in the, peace, in the fifth anniversary of the peace agreement. For many years, the Colombian government and the FARC were negotiating and decide how to put an end of this nonsense conflict. To, so they decide a complex agenda and they decide, let's do an um, agrarian comprehensive reform to tackle the roots of the conflict and especially overcome the situation of the victims of the conflict that is part of the rural communities. This is was possible by the support of the United Nations. Now, European F uh, Union are funding this uh, agreement and Germany is cooperating. So it means that if we people, they are involved in the implementation of the peace agreement, are in serious security pro problem and are in danger their lives. That means that the international community is failing as well. This violence, this nonsense violence, this nonsense violence or the headlines that we are seeing in the, in the newspapers, violence and destruction is a huge distraction and is the type of the iceberg, is what we are seeing very easily. And it means, and it's obviously that the current government tackled the problem through declare everything illegal in the Amazon. So Alice is, uh, everything is illegal, mining illegal, lodging illegal, farming and so on, and create a environmental battalions. In the short term, it's a good strategy, but the problem is the long term. What is going to be the plans after the security? What is, and the problem is that the, targets of these operations are the small farmers who are used by the illegal uh, criminal networks that really are continue the conflict and the deforestation. And the reality of the problem is that what we are not seeing in this dark hole in the middle of the forest, the real problem is this historical conflict of land grabbing, land disputes, and the exclusions of the farmers to own their land where they live. Let me put it a face. And this is communities, they 
living in the most poor conditions, and not in Colombia, worldwide. 78% of the poor people live in rural areas. So in our knowledge or in a common sense, we say, let's bring economic uh, programs, technological programs, and to have an income. But the problem of this uh, program that we are seeing is if they don't guarantee the human rights, that programs like at the fair, uh, fair trade programs, they are going to have a lot of noise and interference in their, in their implementation. Here is Jose. Let me introduce Jose. Long time ago, we have sharing his struggle because he participates in these initiatives of fair trade and he's a tenant farmer. So he has an income, but when he faced a legal problem with the landowner where he cultivates the avocados, we went to the labor judge and we went to the civil law judge, but the problem is because it's an informal situation, not a contract, not anything, no strong proofs, he, we couldn't solve his problem. Oh, Maria, Maria, strong women cultivating with his, her sweat every single day. When she tried to fight to get her formal title for her land that she thinks that she is be belongs to her, we couldn't solve the problem. And what I am talking to judges, magistrates in Colombia and so on, and there are no clear rules. So what we are teaching at the university, seriously, and and what is, what is going on on, on on the system? So the reality is a person who cannot have access to justice means they don't have rights and they are living without a state. And in my, through my legal research, I find in, and it's punching my face all the time, is inequality and exclusion are imprinted on the land and of the legal system in Colombia and in many places around the world. Access to justice is important for the inclusive growth. It's important for the communities to have a well-being, to be humans again, to have dignity. And our Access to justice, peace, and strong institutions are part of the sustainable development goals. When we are lucky nowadays that in our knowledge and in our scientific understanding and our proofs are that the farmers, they can ha a, a, a increase the food security, they can live in the rainforest and protect the forest, and protect the biodiversity because they are guardians and we have proofs of that. And they should be a key actors and in the core of the, our sustainable development uh, projects. But when I talk about access to justice on bring the state to them, it's not talking to do the same long history of failure. It's not the typical state institutions, more police officers putting everybody in jail is institutions they can guarantee their life projects their and the judges they can really get sympathy and empathy to their rural lives they don't try to change their they and at the same time protect the rights of their nature we are living in the covid 19 times and in our monitoring data shows that the people they are left behind before the pandemic are more left behind. So in our, in our recovery, to do it in an inclusive way, we have to overcome the situation in the rural areas because they are having a heavy bargain on their shoulders. What we should do? Let's install now. Let's be serious about it. The states and the rural and the citizens, they have to bring a strong institutions and really get serious sustainable development in the rural areas. Adapt the sustainable development to the rural areas, not bring urban 
institution because they are not going to work there. We can, like uh, uh, we have the United Nations Declaration of the Right of Peasants and the Other Peoples, we should stand now this declaration in the local level. And that it means that people like me and my colleagues, as a legal scholars, we are rethinking the law. We have to rewrite the law to protect the small farmers, more easy legal mechanisms, and protect the nature at the same time. Finally, what should, you can help me on this because I'm tired to see bad uh, data, disaster data, we really recording the disaster and we are not doing anything. The European Union and you here guys are benefiting, uh, benefiting from the agricultural pro uh, products that comes from Global South. It means that you have an ethical responsibility. So you can push your politicians and the uh, enterprises who importing the pr agricultural products because we cannot continue eating bloody tomatoes, cacao that comes the, from the deforestation in Congo and Africa and so on. So they have to bring and rethink the cooperation and see, let's bring strong institutions worldwide that works with sanction and responsibility for the human rights of the small farmers. And rethinking, push hard to these states, sanctions, allocating resources, and so on. We cannot live without avocados. Yeah. yeah, we can't. Yeah, no. And we need to save the planet. So we must to grip into the system and protect a key actor, the small farmers. Thank you so much. Woo!